Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, of course, the bulk of today's podcast will be dedicated to the patch uh, released for OpenSSL, even though it turned out to be not quite as bad as people, including myself, anticipated when it was pre-announced. It was pre-announced as a critical vulnerability, but then what was actually released was only rated as high. And the reason behind this is that, yes, potentially this vulnerability could be used uh, for remote code execution, which, of course, typically rates it critical. But it does require some fairly specific preconditions and also is unlikely to be exploitable on most common platforms. I will link in the show notes uh, to a blog post by OpenSSL that has a couple more details about the downgrading from critical uh, to high. So let's talk a little bit about this vulnerability. It does affect certificates that contain domain names that are using international characters. In domain names, international characters are typically encoded as punicode, and that's the representation of domain names that you find in certificates, which could happen as like a subject alternate name, where you typically find host names sort of in server certificates, but it could also uh, occur in email addresses. Now, there are actually uh, two CVEs, so two distinct vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-3602 and CVE 2022-3786, but the vulnerabilities are very closely related. They're both uh, related to this uh, Punicode issue. In so far, I'll uh, treat them more or less here as a one vulnerability. The first one being the one that was originally rated as critical. It does allow a four byte uh, buffer overflow. If an invalid Punicode string is being parsed, but this only happens if the certificate first passes the certificate validation. So it has to be signed with a trusted certificate authority. Now, typically, certificates are really only validated by clients. If a client connects uh, to a server, the certificate is sent from the server to the client, and the client validates it. So this is primary uh, client-side vulnerability. However, there are some configurations, sometimes referred to as mutual TLS or MTLS, where the client is also asked to send a certificate. And in this case, the server may be exposed to the exploit as as well. The second vulnerability does affect the email addresses, and this is a variable length overflow. However, uh, the only bytes you can actually overflow here are the dot character. And well, uh, if you know some shell code that only connects uh, dots, uh, then uh, that may be an exploit option here. So uh, this is and remains at this point a denial of service vulnerability only, and that one uh, was always uh, rated as high, and that's sort of why they have these uh, two distinct uh, vulnerabilities. Datadog Security has uh, written up a more detailed uh, sort of analysis of the vulnerability and uh, what exactly happened here. They also did create a proof of concept exploit, so an exploit is available. But this exploit only triggers the denial of service. Uh, now, uh, one issue that came up is could I trick a normal certificate authority into actually uh, signing a bad certificate like this? Now, in order to do this, you would have to register a domain name that basically uses a Punicode representation that would trigger the vulnerability and then convince a certificate authority to give you a certificate for that particular domain name. The biggest hurdle here is that the Punicode you would need to use is actually not a valid Punicode. So probably you wouldn't even be able to register the domain. And secondly, the Certificate Authority Browser Forum, which sets standards for certificate authorities that are trusted in browsers by default, 
explicitly does not allow signing of certificates with invalid punicode. So uh, this should prevent anybody from rights-sourcing domain if they manage to do that even and then have a certificate created by this. I have been looking a little bit at certificate transparency logs and didn't see any indication that someone uh, would try to exploit this. So you really only would be able to exploit this using a private certificate authority. Now, private certificate authorities are often used, now, for example, if you have some web services talk to each other or uh, in internal networks, like for development systems and such, I like to use my own private certificate authority for that. And yes, you know, I could uh, create uh, one of those certificates, but again, this would then require that an attacker would actually first uh, compromise my certificate authority in order to have that certificate signed, which, uh, well, uh, Probably the bad certificate would be the least of my problems in that particular uh, case. As far as patches go, I have seen uh, patches uh, for Ubuntu 2204, which is probably sort of the largest uh, deployment of Open SSL 3.0. So you should be taken care of if you just basically do your apt update and apt upgrade. Haven't looked too closely at other distributions, but I would expect that all the major distributions do have updated OpenSL packages out by now. One thing uh, to be aware of here, and that's very standard, is not specific uh, to OpenSSL, but uh, Linux distributions usually do not update the version number when you're upgrading uh, a package like OpenSSL. So you'll still see OpenSL 305 or 301 even or something like that. What typically happens is that they only backport the security patches to not run into any compatibility issues. So any features added in later sort of subversions of these uh, packages or libraries are not included, which is why they keep the version number the same. Often there is an additional identifier sort of at the end of the package name or such that'll tell you that uh, this is a newer package that uh, has certain security updates included. But for example, after updating on Ubuntu 22.04, I still get OpenSL 3.02 from March 15th. Also, the actual OpenSL binary is not updated. It's just uh, the SSL library, so your lib SSL that is uh, being updated. Well, so in short, uh, not too much to worry about it. Uh, patch it. Definitely, there are some exploit possibilities. Abilities. But uh, you know, yesterday I talked, for example, about the Java Spring security vulnerability. I actually think, particularly for enterprises, that's a bigger deal than uh, this uh, open SSL vulnerability today. So that's all I have for you today. And thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.